Hi, my name is Christoph Reichert from CBR Technology. We're a California-based uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central implementation partner and sales partner as well. Uh, today I would like to talk about inventory adjustments as well as lot number, serial number uh, related item tracking information for Business Central. There's a fair amount of confusion out in the market regarding inventory adjustments capabilities of the software. Obviously this is in the inventory management module of the solution. Now during the demo and uh, walkthrough on our video here today I'd like to discuss um, how the system treats lot numbers and serial numbers and how expiration dates may be affected by this as well. Uh, also like to talk about inventory valuation methods, uh, specifically highlighting the differences between FIFO and standard, uh, as well as specific. Um, finally, unit cost issues when you make both positive and negative adjustments. Uh, there's a very uh, important part of the override that you need to be aware of when you make an item journal entry. And then how your system is configured with regards to posting the item cost to your GL with regards to updating the adjustment um, properly in the GL uh, for audit reasons and uh, GL tracking purposes, of course. And then finally, um, often asked question is how you uh, control and report inventory adjustments um, on reporting and, and inquiry screens. Uh, if you're being audited or an internal or external auditor is reviewing your company's records as to how you may obtain that information for their review. Having said all of this, I'd like to dive into the product. So let me launch the system now. So this is our Dynamics 365 Business Central hosted um, platform. I'm on a sample company or uh, you know, sandbox company called Kronos USA that you're probably familiar with. All of you will have access to this company file typically um, and it contains fictitious information. Now in here I've set up a couple items and made a few configuration changes so if your system doesn't react exactly like mine does uh, please be aware that these changes have been made. Of course we'd be more than happy to assist you with uh, your particular implementation if you're having trouble uh, with that. Um, specifically on the item setup here, we set up a new item that you don't have in your company files and an Amsterdam lamp, which you do have, but this one is a special one. It's a copy of the other item next to it. And in it, you see that we've activated a number of features, um, some of which I covered in another video of ours called landed cost. But specifically here, you'll see a difference between last direct cost and current unit cost. And we'll come back to these items here in just a moment, but this is typically when you purchase this item overseas, what you will expect to pay on a purchase order. And by the time you actually get it to the United States into your warehouse, uh, you have a totally different cost because of tariffs and uh, insurance rates and you know shipping charges and things of that nature. So that's obviously landed cost, as I suggested before, that is covered by in another video for you to look at. However, what I would like to talk about in greater detail is this option here, the costing method. So most distribution wholesale organizations use obviously FIFO first in, first out, but the system does support a number of other options. Uh, the other one I'd like to specifically mention is this third one here called specific. So if you're using serial numbers, so for high-valued individual items, um, you can have an option on an item-by-item -item basis to turn this on. So even though the rest of your system might run FIFO, you might have some items that are high-value unit value items that are on specific, which means the system tracks serial numbers and each serial number will have its own cost. So part of the motivation uh, of us putting this video together was uh, the fact that some of our clients have experienced problems in this area when they made adjustments. So um, the serial number cost per unit can be significantly different from one item to the other if you're using specific. When you make inventory adjustments, these differences can be um, causing trouble when you make these adjustments. And I'll talk through that in just a moment when we get to that point. The difference between FIFO is that it's using an inventory valuation method strictly on the date of the transaction, first in, first out. Specific allows you to ignore the transaction date and choose specific serial number that works uh, for that transaction. Please note that specific only works for serial number in the tracking field, not with lot numbers. The other ones are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about those. So this particular item 
we've created some previous transactions for including uh, landed costs as you can see here uh, but what I wanted to show you specifically is another issue having um, to do with uh, what the system calls item tracking information so in the item tracking information screen if you look in the history under entries here you see item tracking entries so if the item has lot numbers some people call them batch numbers or serial numbers that information will sh be shown in this window here called item tracking entries. So for this particular item, we've created two transactions in, in a previous um, video. And as you can see here, we have two different lot numbers and two different quantities for each lot number as well as a remaining quantity for both. So if I had partial lot availability, that would be shown in here. Uh, another question we get frequently has to do with expiration dates and warranty dates. So those two dates are tied to a lot number or a serial number. So when you create a new purchase order and you receive an item for the first time, the system will ask you for what the lot number, expiration date and warranty date for that particular lot is. If you're doing serialized items, it'll be doing the same question what are the expiration dates and warranty dates for each serial number. So the screen will look almost identical. The really important piece of information here is that none of these fields can be edited later. So if you accidentally buttered fingered the lot number to be wrong or you have the wrong expiration date or warranty date on the system, once you post the PO receiver or any positive inventory movement, so an in positive inventory adjustment, uh, production uh, output journal, an assembly output, you know, any positive inventory adjustment that asks you to identify a lot number and or serial number with expiration and warranty date. Once you post those transactions, you cannot simply go in there and change this. So if I made a mistake here, I have limited choices, which is again why we made this video. Uh, so specifically in my case here, uh, a, a thing, a, a frequently occurring item that we get a fair amount of support calls for is folks say that they entered the right lot number but they put in the wrong expiration date or the lot number, whenever they use this lot number, this expiration date and warranty date comes up automatically. And the answer is that is absolutely correct because again, the system treats these fields as related and linked to each other and they are considered non-editable. So what do you do if one of these three fields are wrong and these are mission critical fields? Expiration dates, for example, if you're selling perishable goods and these perishable goods have the wrong expiration date on them, that can cause problems for you, of course. And um, somebody, when they received the PO, was put in the wrong expiration date and you didn't catch it in time and you posted the transaction. The only real choice you have is to reverse the inventory transaction. So if that's an example where you simply made the expiration date error, the easiest way to fix that probably is to make a negative adjustment to take the wrong product out and then a positive adjustment to put the correct product back in. What's important to note there is that when you do make a positive inventory adjustment, you cannot use the exact same lot number again because if you type in the positive adjustment with the same exact lot number again, it will simply retrieve the expiration date and warranty date from a previously posted transaction and again will not let you modify that. So you have to make a slight alteration to the lot number. Some of our clients simply put a dot behind it or a, a dash um, R for revised or something of that nature to indicate that the lot number has been updated and modified. So that's a really important um, part of your understanding of the solution and some of its limitations. Um, we did um, have the we do have the ability to write some custom code to change this Microsoft standard functionality that would be applied to you in an extension. Uh, we we write you know extensions and code modifications um, daily for our clients in Business Central. So if you need anything uh, done in this area, uh, please let us know. But uh, this is the standard Microsoft functionality as it stands today. So uh, to make an actual inventory adjustment, you create an item journal, which you probably have determined on your own by now. So when you do an item journal, there was one other thing I wanted to really bring to your attention. And that is this. So in this scenario where I'm modifying the 
uh, lot number, for example, or made an expiration date mistake. I first do a negative adjustment and I take the item out. So let's say there's you know 10 units on hand and I make put the item out, specify the lot number, and, and that's done through items in here, item tracking, and find the lot number that needs to be adjusted. In this case, let's say this first one here, the one, two, three, four, five, put that in here and that will adjust that and take it out. When I now make another entry for the exact same entry, I wanted to make you aware of the following. When I'm doing the 1928-P item here that I set up and use the same exact location, there's a common misperception and common mistake that people uh, will do while they're doing this entry. And that is this field right here, unit amount. So as you can see here, a positive adjustment will default to the last unit amount, unit cost that's on the item card. And that could be greatly incorrect, meaning that just because that's your most recent cost doesn't mean that that's your cost for that particular product. So the system does not reference anything else um, when you're using um, a positive adjustment because it has nothing to reference. A positive adjustment is just that. You're adding product to the inventory. It, the system assumes that the last cost you re realize for this item is what you're using now, but it doesn't mean that you do. Uh, we have a client that uh, uses serial numbers and they have widely different costs for each serial number. They have to take care that every time they do this positive adjustment, this unit amount is in fact the correct cost for that particular item. Now, the negative adjustment, on the other hand, is much more lenient, and this value actually doesn't mean anything, to be honest with you, because what the system does is when you do a negative adjustment under entry type here, this is where it triggered the negative adjustment versus positive adjustment, it will look at the items inventory valuation method, FIFO, LIFO specific, and it will remove the value that is assigned to this transaction at this time when you post it. So um, that's why the unit amount really, to be honest with you, is quite irrelevant what you type in here. Uh, you simply leave that as default as you can see here, but when you actually post this transaction, it will trigger and kick off the um, calculation of the inventory valuation method for that item at that time. But again, the real kicker is the positive adjustment because there's no, nothing the system can reference for the right amount other than the most recent cost for that item on the item MasterCard, you know, MasterCard setup. But that does not mean that that's the right cost for that item. So please take care in assigning the right unit cost here. Finally, with regards to the general ledger interface and how this will affect your GL, is um, through the setup. There's a couple of options as to where inventory adjustments are being posted to in the inventory setup. Also, um, there is a setup that's really important with regards to the inventory configuration itself, whether or not these GL um, transactions get posted right away or if they get posted later. Uh, with all of that, we'll be more than happy to assist you if you have any need for an implementation partner that can assist you in properly deploying and uh, configuring the solution. We'll be happy to be of service. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. We, you, we can be reached at 855-227-0700. My name is Christoph Reichert. Of course, we have a team here that are more than happy to assist you in this process. Thanks for listening. Hope you have a great day. Take care.